Alrighty, hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Phil here on the stream, welcome back, and what I mean by that is welcome back to normality. Yes, after two days of E3 coverage, non-stop watching of E3 press conferences, <clears throat> and obviously doing my recaps and reactions, we're back to normalcy here. Every day now we're going to have constant gameplay, fun new stuff, lots of new stuff to actually cover this week. I got a lot to talk about on the pre-stream today because we've got a lot of new stuff going on this week that I want to let everyone be aware of, okay? So today is Tuesday, the 12th of June, 2018. I am DSP. Hello, everybody. I see many regulars in the stream chat already. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome back to gameplay streaming. So, first of all, I got a lot to talk about on the pre-stream, and I want to cover a lot of topics, so please forgive me if I move around and jump around quickly. Uh, here because I do want to get a lot of stuff uh, covered. In particular, I haven't even done a formal pre-stream in over two days. So a lot of people on YouTube are probably wondering, you know, what's up with Phil because he hasn't done pre-streams or anything, okay? So, first of all, all of my E3 coverage is live on my D DSP Gaming channel on YouTube. There's a playlist for it covering all six of the major press conferences that happened over the course of the weekend. EA, um, <clears throat> Microsoft... Bethesda, um, Ubisoft, Square Enix, and Sony. I recap all of those, and I give you my responses and reactions to them. All right, so you can watch that at your convenience on DSP Gaming. Please, if you do not see something in your subscribers box or subscription box, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, because apparently what happened was some of these videos showed up for my subscribers, and some didn't. So I've, I've noticed some pretty wide ranges of view gaps, and I asked around, I was like, why aren't people watching this one, but they're watching the others? People were like, oh, that one never didn't show up in anyone's sub box. Great. Well, you know, that's just how YouTube works. They pick and choose what videos you guys want to watch, apparently. So some people didn't know, for example, that the EA video was in sub boxes, but then Sony does show up. So please give them a look. They're all live. All right. Now, any further E3 coverage that I do this week will be covered in my podcast coming up this Thursday. That's right. I'm actually doing a podcast for the first time in over six months. Uh, I have not done one, okay? So it's going to be the big E3 Roundup podcast where I talk about the best and worst, who won E3, what were the best announcements, the shittiest parts of E3, etc. It'll be an interesting summary. And what I'm going to do is go through the new gaming calendar. Now that we finally have a good idea of all the release dates of all of the games that are coming out uh, for the rest of this year... And I'm going to let you know, you know, which ones I'm interested in. And uh, we're going to go from there. Okay? So that's going to be a fun podcast. Plus, I'm going to cover other topics as well. You know, as usual, I always cover a bunch of topics. But, I mean, the main focus of the podcast will be my E3 segment. So, that's coming up on Thursday. All right? Outside of all of that, I'm not going to be doing any other E3 coverage. So, don't expect me to be doing a, a, a Nintendo video. Don't expect me to be doing... oh a video on PC gaming or a video on a bunch of other stuff that was released from the show floor today. Um, I'll do my best this week to get caught up on all the new news and talk about it on the podcast on Thursday, all right? Instead, I'm back to gaming, which is what I do best, right? Doing gameplay streams, entertaining you guys. So today, a double streaming day. We're going to start off with Jurassic World Evolution, and it's a very timely release because next week is the release of the new Jurassic World movie. Okay, Fallen Kingdom. Now, what is Jurassic World Evolution? It's a game where basically you make your own Jurassic World theme park, and you get to decide between what kind of dinosaurs you want to have. Do you want to have just the herbivores that are low risk? Do you want to have the carnivores that are the ones that could break out and eat the eat the park goers, right? Um, obviously, there's going to be much like Zoo Tycoon, an economy that you need to balance, but also there's going to be you know the uniqueness of running a theme park with dinosaurs. It seems like it's going to be pretty cool and. Since I live stream now, right? It's not like it used to be where I just do everything kind of by myself. What big interaction opportunities we're going to have. You guys could, you know, tell me and vote for like, oh, we want to see this dinosaur. Do this, do that in the park. Put this, let's try this out, right? <clears throat> so it could be pretty entertaining and it could be pretty interesting for a streaming game. I actually think this might not be, or this might be a game better for streaming than actually just playing. Because with the streaming, we get the interactive aspect, right? That uh, we're not going to get if you just play the game by yourself. So it might actually be a pretty entertaining stream game. We'll see today. Uh, it's going to be my main gameplay stream for today. All right. Then tonight, I'm returning to H1Z1. 
after the really awesome se- session that I had of this game last week where I actually made top 10 multiple times and even won a game, uh, I want to play more of the game. So that's going to be tonight, more H1Z1 on stream. It should be a lot of fun, okay? As you can see, today I will have the uh, cheer, or excuse me, the stream leaderboard up all day long, including counting how many subs we have, top cheerer, and top tipper. So good opportunity today to get recognized for your contributions here on the stream. Why is that there? Simply put, this is a sim game. It's not a game with a big narrative. It's not like having that ticker is going to interrupt or distract from the game at all. Um, it's not like you're, I'm playing Detroit and it's, you know, oh God, it's you know tearing me out of the narrative to have this ticker on the screen or whatever. Um, so, should be a good day. All right. Tomorrow, another day of new content. I'm going to be trying out Unravel 2 tomorrow. Now, this is a game, the sequel to Unravel from, what was it, a couple of years ago, that um, is completely unique uh, in that it has now co-op, well, co-op and a co-op aspect, or you can control two characters solo, which is what I'm going to be doing. And it was released over the weekend by surprise at E3, okay? So that, I'm going to be starting that tomorrow, four hours of uh, Unraveled 2 tomorrow on stream. Should be pretty fun. And then tomorrow night, I'm going to be continuing on with my Vampire playthrough. That's right, my Vampire playthrough is not just ending out of nowhere. It is going to continue, but it's going to be more of a nighttime stream kind of a deal. Um, then Thursday is my podcast on my first stream, okay? And then Thursday night, I'm leaving completely open as well as Friday. I'm leaving these two days open to see between Jurassic World Evolution and Unravel 2, what games did you guys like better? You know, if you like one game better, I'll give it more time on stream. If there was a game that you didn't really like as much, maybe I'll give it less time on stream. All right. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing is I'm trying to basically, you know, take your feedback in about the new releases this week and see what you guys exactly want to see me play. All right. Um, then Saturday's my day off. And then I'll be back on Sunday. And again, what I'll play on Sunday, maybe it'll be Street Fighter or maybe I'll just do the new releases. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. So there you go. And basically the way this is going to go is I'm going to be tackling these three games, Jurassic World Evolution, uh, Unravel 2, and Vampire, Vampire, whatever, on and off uh, for the next week or so. Okay. Once we finally finish up with one of them, okay, um, more than likely what I'm going to do is start or at least figure out how to start my patron's choice playthrough. This is one of the big things that I want to give you guys an update on because we do have a big update here in regards to a lot of these ongoing events that people have been voting on and everything. So we've got results. Let me debut the results here live on stream. First of all, the patron's choice playthrough that will take place first during this summer is a game that over the years I've attempted to play multiple times and I never completed myself. It's a game that's very old but has a humongous fan base, and in particular, it may be a great time to play this game, because guess what? The game developer who made it finally has announced they are making new games again, and a lot of people are speculating they're actually making or working on the sequel to this game, okay? The game that I'm speaking of, of course, is Barbie Horse Adventures, and we will be starting that... Okay, I'm, that's not Barbie Horse Adventures. Um, the game that I'm speaking of that won the Patron's Choice poll... In a resounding victory was Half-Life 2. So, Half-Life 2. I'll be starting up that playthrough as the next new playthrough after the games I'm playing this week get wrapped up. Alright. Uh, what version will I be playing? More than likely a console version. Um, I don't remember if I owned the Orange Box as a digital download or not. But I'm pretty sure the Orange Box would be pretty cheap at this point. Maybe like 20 bucks or cheaper. And for those who don't know, the Orange Box was last console generation a collection of games including team fortress 2 half-life 2 portal all sold as one singular game on consoles all right so we'll see what happens i think i'm gonna get probably get the orange box on a console me i'm gonna see if it's if they ever made it compatible with xbox one because remember xbox one took a lot of backwards compatible games uh and made them you know playable on xbox one so at first i'll see if i can even play if i can play half-life 2 on xbox one i will if not i'll probably be jumping back to like the xbox 360 or something okay so there you go um so that's going to be number one the game that i'm going to be playing as patron's choice okay now number two because we did so good all right since we did so good this month so far i mean we're only 12 days into the month and we hit all the sub goals for the channel. Right now we're up to 491 subs and growing. 
which is great. Um, but the tier two sub goal for the month was that well it was that if we hit it, I was going to do another patron's choice playthrough later on in the summer, and it was going to be whatever game got second place in the polling. Okay, well the game that got second place in the polling was Simpsons Hit and Run. It beat out Jack Three by a single vote, one vote. <laughs> so once again. Jack 3 has gotten the major shaft. And Jack 3, I mean, this is infamous. Jack 3, every single time I put Jack 3 into a poll, it always comes out the loser. I'm not kidding. Like, people have asked me for years, are you ever going to play Jack 3? And I'm like, guys, you don't understand. I've tried to make it to play Jack 3 for years. Like, people always say, well, you know, why, why don't you play it? Well, I always put it in a poll, and everyone says they want to see me play a different game first. Right? I just don't think Jack 3 is able to be win a poll. It's pretty ridiculous because it was tied with Simpsons Hit and Run for like a week. And then all of a sudden, someone came out of nowhere and voted. <laughs> so, Simpsons Hit and Run. From what I understand, it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto. I've heard the game at the very end is incredibly difficult. Um, now, I don't know how, what, what consoles it's available for. Alright, if you guys could let me know what is the most viable way to play this game. Because I obviously... Need to find a way to play it sometime this summer. It's actually not that big of a concern right now because this is going to be the game that's like the last thing this summer. But I'm not sure how to get the game. Like, I know I don't know if it was a GameCube game or if it was a PlayStation game, but people are basically saying it is playable, but I don't know, you know, how do you get it? Do I have to get it off of, like, PSN as a digital download? On the PS3, is it available on the Wii as an emulated GameCube game? Like, what is it, right? Um, Because I don't know. I do not know. Um, Chief Green Her Green Herb says it was an Xbox original. Is that true? PS2, GameCube, and Xbox says Master Saru. I guess what I'll have to see is is it, is it available digitally to download on PS3 or is it available as a, like an Xbox backwards compatible game either on the 360 or the one? And if not, worst case. I guess I'll have to buy the GameCube version if I can find it and then play it emulated on my Wii. So it seems like I got some work to do. If anyone has a suggestion on the best way to play it, please let me know. Um, you know, and I would like to definitely start working on that so at least I have it as an option, okay? So yeah, both Half Life 2 and The Simpsons Hit and Run will be playthroughs going on over the course of the summer, which is honestly perfect. Because as you guys know, the summer is always historically incredibly slow. Alright, the month of July, no lie, I think there's one game release. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. I really don't. But it is what it is. They're doing it again. The same thing this summer as they always do. No new game releases during the summer. Fine. Well, you know. I'll do my best to entertain you guys playing older games since there's no new releases. Okay. Um. So that's cool. Two, two playthroughs. Also, the Rageathon is going to happen. We did hit the monthly goal uh, of subs for the Rageathon to happen. So that means if you contribute to my Patreon this month, if you pledge five dollars or more over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, you will be eligible to nominate and vote on rage-inducing games for me to play in this Rageathon marathon. Okay, so I'm just throwing that out there because if you want to have that pretty much ridiculous amount of control over my, you know, ongoing events, much like the patrons did for this Patrons Choice event, right? You want to become a patron this month, okay? <clears throat> so, please consider it, and, uh, you know, that'll be a fun event. When is that going to happen? Sometime in August, because if you pledge now, okay, uh, you're going to get your upgrade, you're going to become a premium member of the forums in July, and that's when you're going to start nominating and voting, all right? Um, and that means that in August, we'll have our results, Okay. <clears throat> all righty then now in addition to all of that also sometime this month once i get some time you know once these new releases this week start to calm down uh i'm going to be doing my street fighter 30th anniversary collection master run challenge event where one day for around seven to eight hours in a marathon setting i'm going to attempt to beat the arcade modes of all of the street fighter games on the highest difficulty setting now any of you who watched my History of Street Fighter special event earlier this month, know how ridiculously difficult the AI is in those games. In particular, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo cheats blatantly 
Like, the, and the, the computer, if they hit you, will do double to triple damage of what they're supposed to deal. The properties of the moves actually change. They actually change the fucking special move properties to do, like, ridiculous amounts of combos, hits, and stuff that it can't do in a normal, in a normal setting. So, pretty broken. And I don't know how well I'm going to do in this event, but that is going to be this month as well. By the end of the month, at some point. I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm gearing it towards the end of the month. It might be a great way to finish June strong is to do to hold that event, okay? So, I'll let you guys know, you know, again, as we get through these newer releases, even when, you know, more time is coming, um, I'll let you know I'll schedule it and it'll be a fun marathon kind of a day, all right? Um... So, that's the update on all the Patreon events and everything else going on. All right, a lot, of, a lot of interesting stuff there that I wanted to let you guys know about. Um, some people have asked, will there be a Tier 3 subscription goal for the month of June? I'm going to be honest with everyone, I don't think I should do one, even though I easily could. I don't think I should do one because in the month of July, I have a really good idea for a patron, uh, excuse me, for a uh, subs goal here on the stream. And... I don't want to... Oh, I'm going to do that as my Tier 3 goal. Now I have nothing to do for the rest of the summer. You see what I mean? And I, we've already got four patron thing... Or, I keep saying patron. Four sub-goals lined up, including the two patron's choice playthroughs, the rage and the Street Fighter event. I don't want to now have five, six different reward events on deck, and everyone's waiting for them endlessly and wondering why they're taking forever. So, I don't think I'm going to do a Tier 3 goal this month. I don't think it would make sense. But just know, guys... That, you know, your your support via subscribing is much appreciated. It helps me out. You get access to all the fun new emotes, right? Um, and yes, I will be playing Street Fighter. It's not like, oh, Phil's playing new releases. He's dumping Street Fighter. I'm not. In fact, I'm going to try to find, uh, you know, a time to squeeze in Street Fighter this week. Maybe even, like, like Friday. Maybe I'll play some Street Fighter on Friday or something like that, okay? Um, I do like Street Fighter. I do want to play the, the collection maybe once a week if I can. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay. Now, I'm trying to think, do I have anything else that I want to cover? Before we get into our usual segment of plugs and shout-outs and all of that. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to think if there's anything that's coming to mind. Not in particular. Um, the only thing I will say is, you know, last week we had a lot of shenanigans with my DSP Gaming YouTube channel. Where it got suspended erroneously and I had to get it basically unsuspended, um, and a lot of people are now telling me that they're having issues with the channel, like they don't see my videos at all in their sub boxes and stuff like that, so just please be aware, I am back, I am going to be up uploading lots of gameplay videos again starting today, you know, the kind of hiatus of gameplay for the past couple of days because I was covering E3 is over, and so, if you are a subscriber to my DSP Gaming channel and you're not seeing new videos, it's probably because YouTube fucked up and it's not showing everything. So, just be aware, okay? Because I have noticed, I mean, real talk, I've noticed a dip in views, especially of the new stuff I've been playing. A lot of people, like I said, the E3 coverage, I was shocked that there was like one or two videos that the, no one really watched them, the press conference coverage, versus the other ones that was like high views. And I'm like, well, how can that be? Obviously, if people watch one press conference recap, they probably want to watch the other ones. And people are like, because they're not seeing the stuff. So, please just be aware. Um, you know, YouTube isn't working as usual. What else can I say? <laughs> I wish I could make it work. I can't. After 10 years, I, I officially tap out. And uh, there's nothing I can do. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I do want to say thank you. You guys were really awesome over E3 weekend here. You guys came out to all of my streams. You hung out with me and talked with me in chat while we watched the press conferences. Then you watched my reactions immediately afterwards. So, it was really good. It went really well. <clears throat> I can't complain. Even though there was no gameplay, you guys still cheered, sub, tipped, and supported. So, good stuff and two thumbs up. And now I'm ready to jump right back in headfirst into gaming and gameplay today. Okay? Very good. Okay. Um, let's get into the plug segment. Let's get that over with. And then we can give shout-outs for those of you who have cheered, subbed, and tipped uh, on today's stream. Okay? Very nice. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. This is my 10th anniversary as a content creator, if you can believe it. I started putting out regular gameplay videos on YouTube in 2008. It's now 2018, and we're actually very quickly approaching my 10th anniversary celebration. It's actually going to be this fall. It was actually, I believe, September uh, of 2008 when I started. Um, 
And by the way, I have some ideas for some celebratory special events that we can do, and I think we are going to be doing something, some stuff in the fall to celebrate, okay? That being said, thank you for 10 years of support. Whether you watch my videos on YouTube, you, you watch my live streams, whatever it is you do, I want to say thank you guys very much for, you know, coming out and checking out my stuff and spreading the word and being positive and having fun. Thank you very much. I'm only here and able to do this for a living because of your support. So the best way you can actually support me is obviously to watch the videos on YouTube or to watch my live streams, of course. But if you would like to go above and beyond, if you like my content so much that you want to ensure that I can keep doing this full time for the foreseeable future, there's a few different ways that you can contribute, and I'm going to describe those right now. The first way would be to check out my Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. This is a monthly campaign that I run where if you contribute with your pledges, uh, obviously you help me to keep doing this full time. You know, the cost of doing this can vary and fluctuate greatly. One month might not be so bad, then another month there's a bunch of new game releases, I mean new equipment. So your pledges help me with that kind of stuff. But your pledges also earn you personal perks, ways that I give back to you for your contributions in particular. In my opinion, the best perk is the $5 perk. If you pledge five bucks or more to my Patreon on a monthly basis, you get at premium access to my forums, which allows you to nominate and vote on games for special events. As I've already mentioned on this pre-stream, if you do this this month, you'll be nominating and voting on Rage-themed games, games that will piss me off for the upcoming Rage-a-thon marathon. Um, you know, in the month of July, you'll be able to nominate and vote on those games, which is great. You'll, you will actually mold and determine what games will be played in this Rage-a-thon marathon. Just like this month, people molded what games I'm going to be playing for these upcoming Patrons' Choice playthroughs. You know, being a patron of mine gives you unprecedented power over events and over fun stuff that I do on a regular basis. So please consider pledging. In addition to that, there's other pledge, uh, other uh, perk levels as well, like getting text or verbal shoutouts in my YouTube videos, getting your questions answered on my bi-month uh, bi-monthly Q and A show, Ask the King, which is going to happen in July, or getting your own private Q&A video made where I answer your own questions for 20 or more minutes. Pretty awesome stuff, right? Give it a look over at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. And once more, all right, if, if you do pledge, all right, you're going to be formulating these events coming up and it's just crazy amount of power. It's fun. Please give it a look, okay? Very nice. All right, number two. There is my Teespring store where you can buy merchandise, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, stickers, mugs, hoodies, all kinds of stuff, branded with all kinds of logos, uh, artwork, and fun stuff. Give it a look, all right? Please give it a look. And if you do give it a look, uh, and you buy something from my Teespring shop, I make a commission, so it helps me out, and you get a cool collectible, all right? I want to say thank you, because in particular, two people actually bought something from my shop in the last week, so thanks to those people. All right, give it a look, teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP gaming. Great, great quality stuff. I can personally attest to the quality of the product because I own a bunch of it. I own a bunch of the shirts. I own the mug. Um, and, you know, a lot of this stuff now I've owned over a year, and it's it's so good. It never, like, the shirts I've washed a bunch of times, and they still look great. It's the, the better quality material. I didn't, you know, skimp out and sell you the El Cheapo t-shirts that fall apart. I, I got the better quality stuff, even though it means I make less money on every sale. Uh, I want to make sure you guys get quality stuff, all right? So there you go. Please give it a look. Uh, and thanks to anyone who actually does check out my Teespring shop. All right, guys? All righty. Now, last but certainly not least, if you're here live on the stream, and the reason I say it that way is because a lot of people do actually watch my pre-streams on demand on YouTube, okay? But if you're actually here live on the stream, <clears throat> all right, and you're enjoying the fun, you're like, wow, I like Phil's gameplay streams, you know, they're chill, they're interactive, we get to see new releases, it's great quality stuff, and you want to get a shout out during the course of today's stream, you can get one via three methods. You can either cheer with bits, you can subscribe to the channel, or you could tip me, all right? Any of those methods are perfectly valid, and I will give you a shout out for your contribution. However, there are a few criteria which you should know that they exist and you should abide by. The first is please be as short-worded and concise as possible. If you cheer, sub, or tip, and leave me a ginormous paragraph, chances are I'm not going to drop everything on the gameplay stream to, to, to spend 5-10 minutes reading it and trying to respond to it. This is not 
a giant Q&A show. It is an interactive stream, but the whole point is this is not supposed to be just me answering, you know, questions or reading giant messages. All right. So that's number one. <clears throat> the shorter the better in general to keep the stream moving. Number two, please be on topic. Please try to be positive. What I mean by that is please don't bring up derailing topics like politics or religion. Anyone who brings that up, obviously you guys know it's a very decisive, divisive subject. People get angry when people talk about that kind of stuff. This is a gameplay stream. This is not a world news or philosophy stream. And therefore, we don't need to be bringing that kind of crap up. And I'm not going to respond to it. All right, it's number one. Number two, <clears throat> please try to stay positive. Please, no insults. Whether to myself or another, you know, YouTuber or streamer or anyone in the stream chat. No insults. <sighs> Keep that drama negativity out of here. Same way going along that same vein, don't bring up negative stuff that's going on outside of the stream. I don't care if someone's insulting me live right now. I don't care if someone's rebroadcasting me and stealing my content. I don't care about any of that. I am here to put out an entertaining, positive, and fun stream for you. And that's all the stream should be focused on. The game and me interacting with you guys and having fun. Not on all the crap and the drama and the other stuff going on outside of the stream. I want nothing to do with it. Okay? In general, in general, most people get it. And I'd say about 95% of the time, you know, people who go for shout outs know what, you know, understand the, the premise and we have a great time here on streams. Okay. So you're always going to have a few people who don't get it or the bad apples or whatever, but in general, the streams are positive. The streams are fun. I mean, you guys wouldn't be showing up every day if they weren't. So thanks a lot for that guys. And, uh, let's have fun today. Okay. Now, if you would like to go a step further, maybe you want to get visual recognition for your contributions. Not just a verbal shout out, but something visual on the stream as well. Well, we have some really nifty thank you animations that will play for your contributions. All right. When will you get an animation? Well, if you cheer 50 bits or more in one go, or if you subscribe to the channel and wait a few minutes, a share button should appear. So if you click on that particular share button, or if you tip me $5 or more in one pop, if you do any of those three things, all right, uh, you will get an animation that will play on the stream as a way to thank you for your contributions and you know it'll actually show your message your shout out message as well um so pretty cool and you know not, that way you get both visual and verbal uh recognition for anything that you're contributing on the stream and it's very awesome right all right very nice all right two final things guys number one in regards to subscriptions as I mentioned, we've already hit the Tier 1 and Tier 2 sub goals for the month. I'm not going to set up a Tier 3 goal because I feel it would be counterproductive for future months. I want to say thanks so much for your support so far this month. You guys have been amazing in the first just, you know, 12 days of the month. You guys have really been very nice and generous. So thanks very much for that. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> what does subscribing get you? Number one, you get access to all of the awesome emotes of the channel, including the very popular DSP Pepe emo, as well as the brand new spanking new DSP Ryu, Hadouken, and Fireball emotes. If you become a Tier 2 subscriber, you get access to the Evil Ryu emote. And if you become the ultimate level of support, the Tier 3 subscriber, you get access to the Akuma emote. So what I will actually do is I will put all those emotes up in the stream right now so you guys actually see what I'm talking about. I'm doing it right now. <clears throat> These are all the newest emotes that we have. I just did it right now in the stream so you can see them. Um, and shout out to Popsicola who designed these for us. Very nice of you. And as I said, I'm a fan of Street Fighter. I will be playing Street Fighter. I'm going to look to play it at least once a week moving forward in this anniversary collection. <clears throat> so the emotes will be very pertinent. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, Phil has Street Fighter emotes and won't play Street Fighter. Also, keep in mind, you can use these emotes anywhere else. So if you're a fighting game fan, you'll be able to use these, you know, fireball emotes and whatever in other streams, which would be pretty awesome, right? Very nice. Now, also, you will not have to watch advertisements when I use them. I don't use, I'll be honest, I don't use them frequently. A lot of other streamers are constantly running ads. I'm not. I only usually run ads once, if that, during a stream. Because <clears throat> honestly, the ads here on Twitch don't really bring in much revenue whatsoever. Just real talk, they don't. Um, but if and when I do run an ad, you won't have to see it. <clears throat> and you'll get the cool chat crown badge showing how long you've been a supporter. It actually starts off as a bronze crown then it goes silver after three months of support and then gold after six and then you get some rubies on your crown after a year and then some people who very you know soon in a few months will hit a diamond crown for two years of support right pretty cool so thanks to anyone who subscribes i appreciate your support and i hope you enjoy the cool stuff you get in uh as a thanks for it all right now last 
but certainly not least, I want to talk a little bit about tipping. Because I mentioned tipping. I mentioned, you know, you could get shout outs or you could get an animation to play if you tip me various levels. And you might be saying, well, how do you tip? Because I know that you can cheer with bits and you can subscribe to the channel through Twitch's interface. But how do you tip? I don't understand that. Well, it's a completely third party process outside of Twitch's stuff. All right. Uh, there's two ways to do it. If you are watching my stream live right now, <clears throat> if you actually scroll below my stream on the channel page, you should see a grid of information, including the channel rules, which you should probably try to read and understand before we start here. Also, there's a link to my DSP Gaming YouTube channel where I, I archive all of my streams on a daily basis. All right. But outside of those two things, there's also a button there that says Tips Jar. So if you click on that button, it'll take you to my PayPal tipping page where you can either leave an anonymous tip or your name and a message to get that aforementioned shout out that I already talked about on pre-stream. Okay. It's done through PayPal. It's third party. has nothing to do with the whole system here on Twitch. Now. You may not see any of the information I just described because possibly you're watching on a mobile version of Twitch, which is perfectly fine. If that's the case, if you type in exclamation point tip into the stream chat, our bot, Nightbot, will bring up a link. You can click on that link to go directly to the tips page and leave a tip via that method as well. Tipping helps me out tremendously. So thank you guys. Anyone who does do so, so far no one has today. But, you know, you, as I told you, we have the leaderboard up where we're going to have top cheer and top tip going all day long. So you'll get credit and you'll get your name up there, you know, on stream all, you know, during the course of the stream for your contributions. All right, guys. Now it's time for shout outs. Let's do some shout outs to people who have cheered, subbed, or tipped during the course of today's stream. First of all, two cheers from Emperor Swaggins before the stream started. First, he cheered and said, I can't believe that they announced Neo 2. I did not expect that at all. I wish we would have gotten some actual gameplay, but either way, I'm extremely hyped for the future. And then he cheered again. And he said, um, how amazing was the cock block near the end of the Sony press conference when they were like, you know, from software, right? And we all expected Bloodborne 2, and they were like, well, it's a VR game. Yeah, and the, they didn't, the bottom line is they didn't even really show gameplay of the VR game, so you don't even know what the hell it is. Uh, it could be a, a horror game, it could be a normal game, I don't know what it is. Like, there's really no way to tell from what they showed. Okay. So now, shoutouts for people who contributed during today's stream. First of all, we start off with 007 Blaine who resubscribed for the 19th month in a row. Thank you for 19 months of support, Blaine, and also, obviously, for all your support over the years. I know Blaine has been a longtime patron and fan, so thank you very much. But Blaine, in particular, was the person who convinced me to play Persona for the first time. He want, always wanted me to play it. He suggested it as a patron's choice game and ended up winning the poll, and that's why I, I ever played Persona to begin with. So we all owe Blaine as kind of the person who spearheaded that whole movement and by the way, I should mention, I am going to be resuming my Persona 5 playthrough next month. Uh, you know, this month it seems like there's going to be a lot more new releases and stuff to get through, and then I'm going to start Half-Life 2. But it seems like in July, one of the major focuses I'll be doing is going back to Persona 5. And that's all thanks to Blaine. So a major shout-out to Blaine. Thank you, sir. All right. Shout-out to T-Dubs, who, sh who uh, cheered. And he says, E3 is a big disappointment. All I wanted was Meat Spin 2 feels bad, man. Wow, Meat Spin 2. I'm pretty sure disgusting memes, uh, you know, of naked penises is not what they display typically at E3. I'm just saying. Maybe you were in the wrong place. All right. Shout out to Judicious Echoes, who did a 200-bit cheer. By far, you're, you're definitely the top cheerer for now. So let's actually get Judicious Deck Echoes up on the leaderboard. Thank you, Judicious Echoes. And Judicious Echoes said the following. He says, or he or she says, I should say they because I'm not sure of the gender. Don't want to offend anybody. Um, Hollow Knight was just released on the Switch eShop. It's $15 and one of the best Metroidvanias. Yeah, I actually heard, um, you know, some people have, have, have told me about this game over the last year and asked if I was ever going to play it. And it actually did get into the nominations a couple times for things like Patron's Choice, but it hasn't really gotten much attention and gotten into the final polling or anything like that. So, so there you go. Hollow Knight. Maybe eventually I will check it out, but for now, uh, no plans. Kate Cheer says, We have survived E3. Happy Tuesday, and thanks for being awesome. Well, thank you, Kate, for that. AES Cheer says, For some reason, I didn't get a notification that you were live. At any rate, Nintendo's E3 was disappointing. Smash is a day one buy for me, but nothing at the conference wowed me. Well, first of all, just so you guys know, even if you don't get a notification that I'm live, and typically I always tweet as well, 
the best way to know what I'm doing at any given time is to follow me on Twitter at they call me DSP. Even though you're supposed to get notifications, right, for when I go live on stream, even though you're supposed to get notifications for when I upload videos to YouTube, typically sometimes these things go wrong. Follow me on Twitter. I will always post up a notification of what I'm up to. So that's the way that you should definitely follow me. All right. But that being said, in particular, in regards to the Nintendo conference, um, I was completely underwhelmed. I missed the first half of it, from which I don't understand they announced like a new Fire Emblem, an expansion DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles or something like that, or Xenoblade 2, whatever it was. I don't know. So basically non-announcements for me. And then they get into Smash, and they say, well, basically Smash Ultimate, which is what they're calling it, is... The ultimate game where we're bringing back all the characters from all the previous Smash games, but they play the same. Like, they even show, they're like, here, they're all the same. Um, we did do a, a few minor gameplay tweaks to certain characters, and they go through all the tweaks. You know, in particular, a lot of characters' ultimate Smash moves have been changed, their properties. Um, and there's two new characters, Inkling from Splatoon and um, uh, Ridley from Metroid, okay? But outside of that, no new characters. And the guy even said... Oh, uh, since we uh, you know, since we brought everyone back and we tweaked the game, we hope that you know, you're not expecting many new characters or anything. It's like, oh uh, yeah, you're you're selling the game as a new release. That's exactly what we're expecting. So basically, basically from what I see, all right, this is basically the arcade edition of Smash. What does that mean? It means that just much like Street Fighter, uh, this is just a, a a chance for them to tweak the game, bring back fan favorites, and make the game more tournament compatible more tournament viable if you're a competitive player of smash this is probably like a huge announcement and you absolutely love it if you're a more casual player you're probably like why do i want to spend 60 dollars on a game that just brings back the stuff they took out last time and only adds two new characters so i could see this as a big mixed bag depending on what kind of a fan of smash you are the more casualized audience probably is going to be like this is crappy while the hardcore competitive audience is probably like this is great so Personally, for me, was I blown away by the Smash announcement at, at Nintendo? Nope. I was kind of like, okay, I see exactly what they're doing, but I'm not a competitive Smash player, so honestly, none of this really affects me at all. <clears throat> so, not a big deal. Um, Smash is coming out on December 7th, by the way. Smash Ultimate. Smash Brothers Ultimate. Or Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. Okay. <clears throat> Continuing on. Shout out to Aust Mink. Aust Mink cheered and said, the best place to play is on Xbox, Phil Spencer. And then he did the facepalm emo. That's right. Phil Spencer still thinks that Xbox is the best place to play games regardless of the fact that they don't have any of the exclusives. Facepalm is the correct emote to use here. Okay. The Loudest Fart cheered 215 bits. So guess what? Loudest Fart is the current cheer leader. So let's actually get Loudest Fart up on the leaderboard. Thank you very much. I'm gonna get some poopery up in here for the loudest fart. <laughs> and he says, "Thanks for spending E3 with us. Lots of good games to look forward to." I agree. E3 for me ended up being pretty much exactly what I expected. Um, we got a lot of solid, concrete information on games we already knew about getting solid release dates. Finally, in fact, my game—no lie—my game release calendar was very empty, very empty, until. This E3, and now it has populated in a huge way. Um, I haven't had a chance to fully go through it and add all the release dates, but I'm going to do that probably either tonight or tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, basically, th now this year that looked like it was going to be empty is now filling up with a lot of games, okay? And number two, we finally did get confirmation on a lot of games that we had either felt we wanted being worked on or we kind of knew they were but they hadn't been formally announced yet so we got our confirmations but we just didn't get much information about when those games will actually come out so e3 was good this year in my opinion um but it certainly wasn't a bombshell year it wasn't like oh my god this game that everyone is now interested in was announced out of nowhere and it's coming out soon or something like that nothing like that but in particular i think that it was a good year all right all right Deluxe Swine did a 50 bit cheer talking about being overweight, being diagnosed with severe arthritis, and wanting to know about DDP Yoga. I don't use DDP Yoga. I own it. I bought the thing. It's a DVD and, you know, a bunch of like posters and stuff. I never used it. 
you know, my back problems used to be a lot worse than they are now. I used to have numbness and pain, and it went away. So I never used the DDP yoga. I cannot help you. You should seek professional help rather than asking a streamer if you really have medical problems. But in reality, I think the guy's full of it. All right, shout out to AES, who cheered and says, I think that you should drop Jurassic Park World Evolution and play Fortnite for the Switch. Oh, my God. <sighs> no. How about that? Aaron PC cheered. He says, why is this Stranding still my most anticipated game of E3? Kojima is a master of trolling. I mean, listen, at least, at the very least, we got some information about the game. We actually saw the game in action for the first time. We got information about the plot of the game for the first time. And by the way, I will talk about this on my podcast, but we now know what the word Death Str or the title Death Stranding means. If you actually paid attention to the gameplay that was shown, you have a full explanation. It's 100% explained in what was shown. But I think a lot of the people, since it's more, felt like, kind of more esoteric, I think it went right over their heads. I was actually talking to Kat about this last night, and she was like, oh my god, everything you're saying actually makes sense, and I completely missed it. Okay? So, I will talk about this on the podcast on Thursday. I don't want to jump the gun. But I'm going to explain to you Death Stranding based on what was shown at E3. I ha You know, it, it's pretty much straightforward now. But I think a lot of people don't get it. <laughs> okay. Shout out to AES. AES says, I just saw the gameplay of the demo of Let's Go Pikachu. It is very disappointing. You cannot fight against wild Pokemon. It somewhat ruins it for me. I don't think the game's going to be very good. Real talk. It doesn't look like it's going to be very good. It looks like it's kind of a, a cheap cash-in to get something Pokemon-related out this year because the real new Pokemon game they're working on is next year, okay? They're trying to cash in on the craze of, like, Pokemon Go before it dies, even though it already did. So it's kind of already too little too late, in my opinion, but... <clears throat> don't worry. Pokemon fanboys will buy it anyway and then complain that it's no good. <laughs> okay. Um... All right. Shout out to Eternal Napalm, who cheers and thanks for your E3 coverage. Had fun. Ghosts of Tsushima was game of show for me. Well, there you go. Uh, Ghosts of Tsushima certainly looks good. A game set in feudal Japan um, where the Mongols, I believe, right? I think the Mongols are attacking Japan and they're trying to defend it. And you got samurai action and all kinds of stuff. The graphics looked quite good. So, yeah, it looks like Ghosts of Tsushima should be a pretty good game. But we have no idea when it's coming out, of course. And Bruce Wagons cheers says, I'm surprised there was no Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Pretty sure they said that game would come out this generation. Um, I'm sure they're working on it, but more than likely they don't want to jump the gun. So probably next year we'll get information about that. Uh, Gizgo716, subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Gizgo. In fact, in just a moment, <clears throat> I'll check on subscriber numbers and see if our numbers have gone up or down here today. Um, and Aust Mink cheered and said, Phil's philosophy talk hype. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's see. How many subs we actually have on the channel right now? Let's take a look here, okay? We're still at 491, okay? So no reason to change it there. Um, one thing I want to address, someone in the stream chat just said they're actually afraid to contribute because they think they're going to get 30 troll message whispers. You probably will, and the bottom line is don't use whispers on, tw on Twitch, and I mean that. Whisper system on Twitch is broken. It lets anyone harass you constantly. I personally turn my whispers off, and it's a much better experience. Um, you can report people who, who harass you. You can get them banned from the site. There's many different ways to get around that, all right? But in particular, maybe you want to contribute, you want to help out, and you don't want to get harassed. Well, you can tip me, and you can tip me anonymously, and no one will know that it was you at all. You could do a completely anonymous tip, okay? Or you could pledge to my Patreon. Or you could buy something from my Teespring. You do all those things, no one will know it's you, and they cannot troll you here on Twitch. Okay, there are many, many methods to contribute. <clears throat> okay, um, what I want to do now, before we begin with gameplay, I want to do a shout-out to, so far, all right, the top ten people who have cheered this week. Keep in mind, that means one day, because this cheerleader board resets over the weekend. So basically, the top ten people who contributed in the last day, all right? At number 10, we've got Gibby Pats. Thank you, Gibby Pats. I appreciate that. In a tie for number 9, we've got Eternal Napalm and Aaron PC2. Then we've got Sidella slash Obi-Wan Kenobi at number 7. At number 6, we've got Kate. At number 5, we've got Mozales. 
At number four, Emperor's Wagons. At number three, Smart Weirdo. At number two, Rink Dude. And sitting up at number one right now for this week, Aust Mink. So thank you guys for your contributions. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for that. Uh, Little Blake asks, what's the best email to reach me at? It's always been darksidephil at hotmail.com and will continue to be so. So thank you very much for that. <clears throat> Anything else anyone wants to, to chat or talk about or before we get started here? Or shall we jump into trying out Jurassic Park Evolution and see what happens? Huh, Austin says, number one. That's right, you are number one. WJR says you can buy the orange box digitally on Xbox One. It is backwards compatible and it's $20. That's probably what I'm going to do then to play Half-Life 2. More than likely, that's what I'll be doing. It's funny, I tried to play Half-Life 2 three times. First when it was on PC, then when, it was, when I first bought the orange box, and then again later on I tried to play it again, and every time I never finished the game. So hopefully doing interactive streaming with you guys, I'll actually be able to finish the game and not get bored of it. <laughs> I hope so. <clears throat> Okay, are we good? Are we all good to go? Are we ready to go? <laughs> Eternal Napalm says make a park of all raptors. Raptor world! <laughs> Raptor world. Where, where the doors are all unlocked. <laughs> okay. By the way, I'm pretty sure in Half-Life 2 you do not have to crouch jump, right? Like, you can... And it helps in the game. But I'm almost positive. You don't have to ever crouch jump. Right? Like, it, you know, it is a game mechanic for the original Half-Life. But it's not necessary. Because I got really far in the game and never crouch jumped once. I didn't even know the game mechanic existed. AES just cheered. He says, warning for Nintendo Switch owners. If you want to play Fortnite, you better hope you didn't play the game on other consoles. Because your Epic account will not transfer to the Switch. There you go. <clears throat> Popsicolo says, well, I need to redeem myself by mastering the crouch jump. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess that's it, guys. I guess we're going to start. You guys ready for some Jurassic World action? See what kind of a park we can whip together? Ugh. Oh, man, I'm finishing the pre-stream. I start to stretch and yawn. Great. Rawr. Rawr. I'm a T-Rex. <clears throat> alright guys thank you very much let's end the pre-stream let's begin Jurassic World Evolution again like I told you guys much much more interactive stream if you guys want to have suggestions on what I should be doing and stuff in the park I'm more than open ears let's all have fun together should be a good one alright alright let's do this <laughs> 